the wind is strong and thank you brian i've got to be held down right now the wind is strong up here obviously the flames are going to be blowing because of this so keep an eye out for any of those embers and if you are asked to leave your home folks please do so be safe today well Walt, i can start by saying the conditions here at donner lake are much different than they were yesterday now search and rescue crews are currently searching for a 24 year old male truckie resident folks rock boulevard is still closed this morning it looks like they are cleaning up here though again one male adult has been removed from inside Flames did reach up to the power lines, which may have been a reason why some of the power was left from this area. But it is all too real. We are showing you right now what happens when a Christmas tree lights on fire. Tailgating incident ended in a shooting. Now, the interstate is still closed. You can see behind me as the two vehicles involved are continuing to be investigated. Authorities were called to the Circus Circus Hotel behind us at about 3 a.m. after two men were stabbed, and this entire situation broke out over a hat. Well, a domestic dispute that broke out here at the home behind me on Rock Boulevard ended in a three hour standoff and according to police he stated he would have kept going until he was caught. According to these court documents the state has filed two complaints against Judy Mikovits. Charred pipes to damaged land. These are the conditions under which crews are working with as they figure out how to restore the land damaged by the call and fire. I spoke exclusively with athletic director Kerry Groth who said ball violated team rules. Wells Avenue is going to reopen open today. It's going to be the first time that it has been open since the project has started. So I'm going to take you inside right now of the on ramp. You can see if your Halloween candy is safe. So right now I'm going to demonstrate it. We have a box of Halloween candy that I brought in and I'm going to put a piece of metal. It's actually a paper clip to replicate either a staple or a razor blade. I've got my American flag handy and my support our troops bracelet on right now. This Veterans Day, it couldn't have been a better day. The sun is shining. Well, Karen, that's exactly what I'm about to show you. We are standing in the front of the line here at Shields and we're going to pan all the way down so you can see there's about 30 to 40 people here already and of course the crowd favorite bull riding fun is going to kick off tonight at 7 and folks I'm in light of the spirit sitting on devil's doorway right now. Day one is now in the books here at the headquarters of the San Francisco 49ers in Santa Clara, California. A disappointing way to start the season here at Austin Stadium for the Wolfpack football team. The final score of today's matchup between the Oregon Ducks and Nevada Wolfpack 69 to 20. According to authorities, suspected shooter Justin Bennett has admitted to committing all of the crimes throughout the six locations around our area. He also told police that he would have kept going until he was caught. I caught up with one man who had an all too close encounter with the suspected shooter. I seen the bullet holes in the window over here, and it really, I got started shaking. Cedric Smyers was staying at the Sandman Motel Monday night and came face to face with suspected shooter Justin Bennett. I came out the door and I seen the guy coming walking right here and he had the gun in his hand and he was like about right here and he hunkered down like this with the gun in his hand. I could see the gun and he says you go back inside. He followed Bennett's orders and went back into his motel room, but not before getting a good look at his face and the vehicle he was driving. He seen me point blank, and I seen him point blank, and I, I probably the only one that seen him that close that could identify him. So I thought, oh man, he might come back and shoot at me now. And during their close encounter, Smyers took note of Bennett's demeanor. He didn't seem like he was upset or anything. So it didn't look like he was trying to hurt anyone. In no, no, he didn't seem like he was trying to hurt anybody. With the help of Smyers' witness account, Reno police were able to find Bennett in his vehicle on 4th Street and make an arrest. I'm glad they caught him. According to authorities, Justin Bennett admitted that he has a hatred toward the government as well as a few area strip clubs, and that may have served as motivation behind these crimes. He has been booked into the Washoe County Jail on $50,000 bail, and additional charges are pending. For the first time since Friday's tragic plane crash, a patient who was transported to an area hospital is speaking out. Ed Larson, a part-time resident of Genoa, remembers the deadly day. The thing crashes right behind me, and I, I get I, all I remember as I'm trying to run is I see stuff coming, and then that's the last thing I heard. I remember. 59-year-old Ed Larson was sitting in box 50, just 20 feet from where Jimmy Leeward's P-51 Mustang crashed onto the tarmac at the Reno Air Races on Friday. 
Larson recalls the seconds just before the plane went down. Or you hear a definite sound in the audience that, whoa, whoa, you know? And so you kind of get an idea by looking at everyone else what they're looking at. It veered over and now it's come right at us. When it was coming down and this looks like it's going to crash, I ran. And at that moment, Leeward's plane struck the ground below, killing himself along with eight others. Larson was struck in the back of the head by shrapnel from the wreckage. Whatever hit me in the head knocked me out, and I landed. I must have been out because I landed like this, and my hands are scarred. On the top of my head, I'm not sure how many stitches. I got a lot. All, all the stuff that I have wrong with me is really on the backside. His right Achilles was severed, both calves sliced, his left shoulder dislocated, and numerous lacerations on his back. The recovery time at least two months, but still he has his life, and his wife Sherry is beyond grateful for that. I didn't see Ed until he got out of surgery, and it was really a relief to me to see him. I'm really lucky to, to be here. There was, I guess there was a lot of carnage. I didn't see any of it. It just makes you appreciate to be alive. As for Ed's perspective on the future of the air races... I don't think they should cancel it. I mean, obviously this was a, tr a real tragedy, but it's a, I think it's a great community event that I enjoyed it. I would intend to go as many times as I was invited. And Ed was released from the hospital today. And ironically, the Huey helicopter that Ed was transported to the hospital in, he earlier toured. The pilot who showed him inside was the one who flew him to renowned medical center. News Force Dina Kupfer worked alongside JK many times during her time in the sports department. She sat down with Channel 2 News anchor Wendy Damani this afternoon. I think everyone, not just in the newsroom, but everyone at Channel 2, um, we're just really raw right now. Channel 2 News anchor Wendy DeMonte reflects on the life of friend and colleague J.K. Metzger. If you worked at Channel 2 over the last 14 years, you knew J.K., you laughed with J.K., you wanted to be J.K.'s friend. He was just such a great co-worker and such an amazing man and, and you know, over the past 11 years, an amazing dad and, and we all learned from him. JK Metzger and a Paul. Reno native, JK graduated from Reno High and then went on to attend the University of Colorado at Boulder, where he majored in journalism. He landed his first full time job at KCBY in Coos Bay, Oregon, and in 1997, he joined the KTVN team. Wendy remembers the laughter JK brought to the newsroom each and every day. What you saw on air with JK was such a small part of this huge personality that he has. He'd read the newspaper with his boys, you know, his three kids, and if there was a, an advertisement with a pretty woman in it, he'd go, hey boys, tenderoni. So they always said tenderoni. So every day JK would walk in, and Kristen and I sit next to each other, and he'd walk in and go, ronies? And that's how he greeted us every day. What do you think you're going to miss most? The jokes, the laughter. The fun. Uh, him just walking by. It was a great, great experience to get to work with J.K. Metzger. He was just so fun. Such a good, good person. At just 41 years old, J.K. left us too soon, but his name will not be forgotten among friends, colleagues, and viewers. J.K. leaves behind his wife, Jamie, and three young boys.